The Wandering Dutchman Podcast. This is In Depth with the Dutchman, the only interview show where it's the conversation, not the questions that matter most. My name is Casey, and I'm joined here at the historic Gaslight on historic 4th Street in Huntingburg for a historic in depth interview. Big Mace running the board over there, smoke sitting in the middle. And right here to my left, possibly your right, is Mr. John Songer, the proprietor of the Gaslight in Huntingburg. John, welcome to the show. Hey. Hey, gentlemen, gentlemen, thanks for letting me crash the party. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Well, there's a lot of pressure on you. This is the first in depth we've done in a while. We got a little busy and then we got unbusy to where we could squeeze this in. Today's date for reference is December 29th. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think. So episode 209 just dropped this morning. Oh, shoot. We need to post yeah, it. Yeah, probably need to post it. Yeah. But we are up here at the Gaslight. It is closed. There's no live audience. There's no couch guy. No. Um, no we could definitely do a live podcast here, though, I think. Oh, absolutely. For future reference. I mean, it'd be our last one. <laughs> Lots we'd of have editing. To make, take yeah. place. Everybody <laughs> would have to wear ball gags. Yeah. <laughs> we could keep her talking. The last time we were here, John, we threw a hell of a party. Oh, my uh, God. October, our friends at Overboard, I think Overboard, we, not overboard. Overdrive. Yeah. Overboard. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, I yeah. don't know who was responsible. Me. For that no. guy. 100% <laughs> me. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying. I yeah. go with the information given to you. You're right. Yes. You did nothing wrong. Yeah. yeah. So we uh, so we wanted to get together with John because the gaslight has been on 4th Street for as long as I can remember. Mm-hmm. Now, when I talked to my father, old Papa Frank, he said, well, it used to be the Victory Theater. Mm-hmm. And so I think there's a lot of stuff we can uncover, but my dad used to work at the ticket booth up front. Really? Yep. When he was oh, yeah, when he was yeah, a little yeah. would have been to victory. Yeah, a young yeah. spry lad. Mm-hmm. He said he re- he worked at the ticket booth up front. Well, I asked. I called Dad last night before we recorded, and I said, "Hey, any insight to when it was the Victory Theater?" Uh, no, we just watched movies up there. <laughs> we'd, we'd sneak in. We'd sneak in a bottle of, of booze every once in a while. Yeah, and thanks. I said, Said, Dad, you were twenty. What? I was old enough. Yeah, <laughs> old enough. So I don't think they believed in time stamps back then. No, you know what I mean it was just it just happened. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. But we let's talk about it. Let's let's start in that order. So we did a, a little Halloween shin dig here at the Gaslight. You trusted us enough to find a band, which was kind of a struggle to find one short notice. Mm-hmm. But the boys from Overboard rocked. I think they did a great job. Awesome job. They were, we, they were fine. We had $2 boo yeah. lights. <laughs> we sold out of 300 bush lights that night. Yeah. Yes. Out of that. Well. We did well. Uh, we Hopefully, we made you some money. But it was a good show, right? Oh, there was dancing in the street going on, yeah. if I recall. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. <laughs> but we, we had a blast. We had a lot of fun. It was kind of our... <clears throat> First big foray out into the public sphere, trying to yeah. throw a party. Yeah, the Dutchman takeover, and then shortly after that, we did our one-year sponsorship party, and we've had some guest appearances at the Holland Legion and things like that. But yeah. As far as, like, our first big, sh- you know, hootenanny, yeah. I yeah, think that, that was one definitely was the first two. Yeah. Pretty good, yeah. I mean, I'd like good hootenanny, and where else to have it than at the Gaslight? I mean, really, let's face it, we, we can do a lot of things here that a lot of places can't do just because of the size of the facility and the way it's designed and, oh, yeah. and the history behind all the stuff that's been done in here. Well, some of that stuff we probably don't need to talk about, the history of things I, that have been done in here. No. We, we, we <laughs> not bring any of that stuff up. And I'm going back decades now because, trust me, it's uh, mm, I've seen things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so we talked about it. So it's the old Victory Theater. And obviously behind us in the shot, we set up the old stage right. where you could see where there was the screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you've never been to the Gaslight, here on Huntingburg. First off, shame on you, but we do have some listeners not that aren't from around these parts. Right. But when you walk off of Fourth Street, that's where the old ticket booth area was. And you've kind of done a recent remodel and kind of redesign, exposed some brick. Was that just we wanted to go back to the old style or we just we just needed a little bit of a change and that's what worked best? Uh, actually a combination of the above. I mean, I've always wanted to bring it back to the victory style. I mean, it was the way it was for almost 48 years. I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, about 48 years. So we became the gaslight in 72. We just had the 50th last year. 
And so, you know, COVID, all that good stuff came along and, and we had to do some things. And, and so I thought this is the prime opportunity. We can go ahead and take that drop ceiling. See, a lot of people don't realize that, that, that front dining room that had that drop ceiling in it, there was literally nothing above it. Right. Mm, I remember that. It was very, uh, Kind of cozy feeling. Yeah, it was very, very, uh, very, very, very cozy. Yeah, you know, I mean, that and I've seen some people fall out of the ceiling before, too. But, you know, again, <laughs> there are things that shouldn't be mentioned. Yeah, right? we're going to leave those be. But, uh, but yeah, so we took the, took the whole thing down and got it out of there. And so I think at this stage, we're probably as close back to the victory as we'll ever get now. You think so? I think so. Because the kitchen, obviously, you know, that's the big thing, too. People don't realize. I mean, the whole building was a theater. Yes. So the kitchen was yeah. seating. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, and I forget when, but uh, like I said, 71, 72, and they poured a bunch of concrete in up there. Uh, mm. Knee high to a weed hopper. I guarantee uh, you. And uh, and so that's that's where that front dining room area came from. And then of course it started off with the theater back here too in seventy two. So. Right. So, so go ahead. The floor would have been sloped, I assume, from the theater days, correct? Right. Actually, where we're sitting right now, this was poured concrete too for the dance floor when it was put in. But this would have been the only flat spot. And then from here, and then all the way out to, you know, if you're going to the bathrooms, those two openings, that would have been the back of the seats in the original. Okay. Oh, wow. So the ticket booth was the front door was right there. Yeah. Yeah. The right. front door. And on the other side where the checkout is now, that was the candy booth. There you oh, go. Yeah. yeah. There you That's go. That's so cool. And, and then the Do window. Do you have photos of all that shit back at, <laughs> hidden in a box somewhere or maybe... Your I've brother got some photos, somebody. but yeah, I, I've been waiting. I, I, uh, Mike Murphy, he, you know, his his grandpa, I believe, that's who was part the builder of the. the Actually, thing. you're you're exactly right because I did ask Dad, and he said he believed that Pat Murphy, yep, was the one who owned it at the time, and that was a Huntingburg Brickyard owner too. No shit, so this wow. is all Huntingburg Brick in here. Ah, uh, hey, and I know for one <laughs> thing, when you dig around this place back here, they backfilled with it. Too. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's a real treat to do yeah. any sort of excavation work around this bitch too. Yeah. So the so the the you've mentioned fifty years, fifty years of running a restaurant, fifty years of a small business, fifty years of just a ton of change and things that have come and gone. Change with the times. Yeah, that right there in itself is is a uh, hey. Cheers to that. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey we have had a good coffee yeah. morning. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll all be coffee. running to the shitter before it's over. <laughs> we get this coffee going here. That's funny. <laughs> so, yeah. how did the gaslight come to be? What's the origin story? Well, the origin delivery is here. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like, and I'm not a hundred percent sure if I've got this story correct. Okay, you got you got to take this tongue in cheek. However, I do know that Warren Evans. That's what I was hoping his knows, name would be brought up. Warren Evans and his wife, Fran, moved here in, I want to say, 65, somewhere around there. Like I said, that's where I get a little sketchy. But they bought the Victory. The Victory had been shut down for a minute, I think. Okay. They bought the Victory, and they reopened it. <clears throat> and... Uh, and so, essentially, after being here for several years, uh, Warren had talked to actually my dad a few times, Glenn, Wendy, they always called. Yeah. And uh, they discussed um, opening up a restaurant here. Mm. So, somewhere around 70, 71, Warren took the plunge and said, hey, I'm going to do the Gaslight. Heck yeah. Now, where the name Gaslight came from? Don't ask me. Have no, no idea. idea. No idea. Warren was originally from the Brookings, South Dakota area. Okay. And I know that the 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 material motif on the outside was all that cedar wood, that rough hewn. And when you came inside, you in that little front dining room we were talking about, you had the yeah. the, the cedar shake shingles out there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. <clears throat> But where the name came from, couldn't tell you. All I know is originally the Gaslight Restaurant and Theater. Wow. So if you think about that now, tell me how many movie theaters are built that do not have a restaurant attached to them. Yeah. yeah. And 50 years ago, this one did. 
Yeah. So there again, there's a, a little bit of unique. Like that was obviously. So how would that have worked then? Did this remain seating and there was the theater? Or they just kind of tongue in cheek. It was the dinner and theater. No, no. Actually, you still had theater seats back here. Wow. So you still had rows. Could so, you imagine that doing like that nowadays, yeah. like doing like dinner in a movie? Well, you know but I mean? all I'd those movie sleeping. theaters have gone to that, though. Yeah. Well, I mean. Because people quit going to the movies. Yeah. I mean, some of them do with their big recliner chairs and the. I think most of them are like that. Yeah. Really? Well, I know that, but like the, the one in Evansville, what was it? The one you could get like chicken strips and, you know, shit like that. But as far beer. as beer, yeah, I know yeah. they sell liquor and stuff like that too. But I, I don't know. That would be wild to think. It's actually, in theory, then come back around. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it was unique back then. And then it kind of, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's like setting a bar. Yeah. Well, always, always. And now it is. Uh, <laughs> so, you, so you start that. Or, and I, I asked Dad. And he said, you know, in the mid to late seventies, a nice little breakfast spot. Oh, absolutely. That's because he said when they mined down in Holland, him yeah. and Sonny Cooper, they'd come up here yeah. for breakfast before work. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. We did breakfast for, well, I about got ran out of town when I quit, which would have been about ninety eight, I want to say. Right. But yeah, I mean, we we opened. Every, people don't realize this. We opened every day at five thirty. Wow. In the morning. In the morning. Hell, you were uh, bitching us about us getting here at eight. Hey, well, he's not <laughs> old. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, but yeah, I mean, uh, so yeah. So when it evolved into the other part of the farm of entertainment that we're known for, too, you right. know, hey, there were some mornings we were meeting the, the morning people. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I could only imagine. Yeah. Well, now, that way you never had to lock the door, I guess. <laughs> well, pretty much. I mean, and this was back in the 80s. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. A lot of disco yeah. played up here. Oh, baby. Let there me was a, a oh. disco ball still here. That's original. No way. Oh, absolutely. That baby's the original yet. Yeah. Oh, the disco. Let me tell you what. I was up there spinning music, man. I was. Whew. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's insane, man. I, I know there's a lot of history in this building and everything like that. And the way it's all changed and been renovated. And, I mean, the new layout that you got now, I really dig. Like with the dining area. Well, opening right. it up, it makes yeah. your space feel <clears throat> a lot the, bigger. In the bar area down here, you know what I mean, with this separation that we've got and everything like that. I mean, it allows for a lot more you know, family seating and stuff like that, right. which times have changed. You the know bar I mean? business, and we could talk about it, and, but the yeah. bar business is all but about dead. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, and this started back probably 20 years ago. I was going to say, sure I was going to, hopefully he would be able to tie into like how this progression yeah, worked. Yeah. I mean, 20 years ago, prior to then, you know, you could, you were pretty much foot loose and fancy free, uh, you know, uh, Maybe maybe the cops would pull you over and they'd say you need to go home or where do you live and we'll drop you. But that all kind yeah, of changed for sure. about twenty years ago and and yeah we we at that point we were boy I don't know you guys probably don't remember that do you do you no yeah I mean, I mean Dave's I, old I, but I don't think I, he's that uh, old I got pulled over one time here in town and I mean I wasn't. I hadn't been drinking yet, but it was it was full intentions on doing that, <laughs> and I got to, I actually it was right over here by uh, Market Street Park. I got pulled over right in front of Walton's old uh, chiropractic, chiropractic office, office. Mm -hmm. and and I had to pour a, a thirty pack out. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually I think Keystone Light oh, or yeah, some yeah. shit. You know? Well, they did you a favor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> did you a favor. We all watched sadly as that stuff flowed down the street. Well, and you and you talk about it, but there was. I'm surprised the the local tavern owners in this county didn't didn't riot, but I don't. I mean, I guess it's fighting the long arm of the law. But you know, there's the stories of which we don't condone drinking, drinking and driving. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's go ahead and set that bar right. But you're talking about an era though where they used to sit outside places and it not even necessarily be. Well, we saw you walking out from the gaslight. Well, yeah, I was in there having pizza with my family. Yeah, and then well, I can smell alcohol, and then it just. You know, I mean, runs downhill it's, from there. It's a tough spot all the way around. Yeah, you know, it always is, and and you know, and we we abided by a lot of that. I mean, uh, hey, the big the big push was the designated driver. Oh yeah, DD, mm -hmm. and and even that really didn't. Change, well, because I've been change. in situations where your DD's drinking just as much as you are. Oh yeah, been there. <laughs> we've all been, been there. there, been there for sure. Designated Dave can transfer into <laughs> drunk Dave really. Quick. Now I think Designated Dave was. Mostly pretty, 
Good. Nated. Great job. As of late. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, he's bailed us out a couple times. Hell, you drove us to French Lick that time. And mm-hmm. uh, there's you, at least one other one. You drove my wife. And uh, uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you drove that, that squad around. But so going back, John, what if you had to, if you had to, um, to date, from, from when you started until right now, if you had to uh, sum everything up in one experience or one word or like a group of two or three words about your experience here, what would it, what would it be? Like, how would you, ex- what, what would the words be that would come to your mind? Actually, that's pretty simple. Yeah. Welcome to my living room. No shit. Yeah. I guess that makes total I mean, sense. I've literally lived here for 28 years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the way I've always looked at it. You know, I, I live here. I sleep at my house. Yes. You know, and that's when you're in, especially, I don't know, you know, retail business is tough regardless, but the food business is a whole nother animal. Whole nother beast. Uh, and, you know, I've talked to a lot of people in the food business and their experiences are pretty much similar to what mine is, you know, uh, you, you, you just, you put the hours in and you never know what's going to what's going to happen at and like what just happened for us, you know, a day and a half ago with our yeah. quote new year's Eve bash. And mm-hmm. guess what? It's not going to happen. Right. And that's, that's the way the food business, you know, right now I could say, Hey, we got a guy delivering product right now. Yeah, All we do. Seven, we like really do. Call. Right behind. <laughs> Seems like a nice guy. The chill on the nape of my neck is a little bit <laughs> uh, uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 The back door is open. So yeah. You know, <laughs> but, uh, so, Welcome to my living room. So I know you, you said like the origin story of the name and like how the, you know, the victory theater and then it transferred to the gaslight and all that stuff. But I, I might've stepped out to talk to the delivery driver and might've missed it. But did you say anything about like how you became tied to it? Well, and actually that's a good point going back. So we kind of left off there. The Evans and your dad, Wendy yeah, were kind of involved. And for those that don't know, I think my mind is right, but Warren Evans, we're talking about the war hero. Oh, yeah. Yes. Warren Evans. First Darby Ranger. Yeah. One and, bad mother effer. Yeah. Yes. Uh, true American patriot. Yeah. Uh, in all the sense to... Uh, Check his book out, too, by the way. Yeah. yeah good. And really, he's, really, really How long has he been read. gone? Oh, he's probably been gone. He's been gone. 15, 20 years? No, 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 no. No. no, no, no. Not he, been that long? He moved out west uh, with his... Uh, he only has one son left, and that's Mark. And uh, he, Mark, I believe he lives on the West Coast. I think I want to say Washington or Oregon. I want to say I think you're right on that. And uh, that's where Warren moved to. He's only been gone, I think, three or four years. Really? Yeah. But he had to have been well into his nineties. Oh yeah, he he was in pushing a hundred. Yeah, yeah early I say he's, 90s, he was definitely 90s. close to being a cent. What how you say that centennial centurion centurion so whatever the hell it is. Yeah, and so yeah, hit so, that hundred year club. Yeah. And that's how. Go that ahead, Dave. What was you gonna say? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we so we're back to the Evans and and your dad, right. and then kind of where bring us forward through the because you have you also have two brothers. Oh yes, yes. That well, were I involved three. in three. three, three, three. Yeah, yeah. I got three. I brothers. only know two. Though. Oh, you don't know the watermelon. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> watermelon tugboat's dad up there yeah. on the corner. Bill. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forget Isn't about he an him. Attorney? No, is he not an attorney? What's he? Business no, he's just kind. he. He's an engineer. There you go. That he's is, an yeah. engineer. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know him because he wasn't part of the gas line. Yeah, true, yeah. true. Well, he I mean, was he was originally, originally, but but he was just a worker. Yeah, Joe, Joe was just a worker, and actually, Oinker, Greg, <laughs> the hog. You know, if you come in, you look at the, yeah. the, the mural that uh, <clears throat> Miss Blondebreath put yeah, on there for yes. me. Uh, she uh, put that on. It's Johnny Dart versus the Hog, and the Hog actually is who was the original manager for Warren when it opened in '72. Which okay. was your brother Greg. Which is my brother Greg, and we call him Oinker. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So, so move, then moving, moving forward, forward, go ahead. So he ran for he ran it for about a year and a half, I believe, and then I believe Warren ran it. And then Warren had somebody else, I believe Bob. Uh, let me think here. Got to think about it. Uh, Carnahan, okay, who had theaters in Princeton, okay, came yeah. in and ran it. Mm-hmm. 
And then it kind of, we, we will get to the seedy side of it. I think there was another guy that came in and ran it somewhere around the 74, 75 era. <laughs> and let's just say that there were a lot of choice movies being presented. Oh, Is that right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow. No shit. I never uh, heard it, that part. Did it involve Debbie and Dallas? No, that's what I was But it might have involved Linda and Love. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Wow. There's that, a damn old uh, <laughs> peep show going on around. That's wild. Didn't know that. <laughs> you know, there, like I said, there are stories, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so after that venture kind of went south. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine. It, uh, well, you know, we do live in Huntingburg. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. God bless. You know, I remember him. Uh, who was it? The, the Chippendales were out at the Dutchman Inn, and I think there was a, there was a petition out there to shut them down and had uh, strike. You know, walkers. You know, protesting. protesting. Oh, my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> but after that, uh, it shut down. <clears throat> The bar, the, the Every, whole building. The whole building. Everything shut down. And, again, I can't remember how long it was shut down, but uh, Bruce Evans, Warren yeah. Hunt. Yes. Okay, so he's been he gone now yeah. for quite a couple, while. Yeah, a couple years. Uh, and, anyway, he decided to open it back up. And it wasn't too long that him and Oinker were hunt, hunting. Birds. Yeah, I said you know, big, bird, were, big bird big, hunters. Big bird hunters, yeah. you know. And, and Bruce talked Oinker into – joining him in here as a partnership mm. okay and then that lasted for oh i want to say about a year all these you know 72 to 78 there was a lot of movement going a lot on. of turnover a lot, a lot of, of turnover move. going yeah. around and that's the food business yeah i yeah. mean really it, yep. it really is a lot of irons in the fire and so essentially bruce got out more and warren and oinker conversed and Oinger ended up buying it completely on contract, and my first adventures in here began with Bruce and Oinker, which would have been about 77. I was a premier three-bay sink dishwasher. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Pearl diver, they like. Pearl, Pearl diver. <laughs> That's right, baby. That's right. And so. And that would have put you at the ripe old age of about. Out of sophomore in high school. That's what I thought, yeah. Because when did you graduate? I graduated in 79. 79. So you're one year older than my dad. Yeah. And no, I'm one year younger. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah younger, yeah. younger, younger. Hey, B John, math is not a strong yeah, suit. Num numbers is hard. Yeah. <laughs> We're really, uh, if you're a fan of the show, you know we struggle on history. And math. math and facts. And facts. A lot of okay. fact check. That's yeah. why I wanted to get that iPad, just in case I got, put in a, I got backed into a corner. I was able to. Google my way out of it. Yeah. Oh goodness, yes, yes. So yeah, so there. That from there it went forward. Yeah. And it went forward with Oinker up until we had a little family scenario that happened around '89, mm -hmm. where we all kind of got together with me and Oinker and Joe, mm -hmm. who's always kind of been here. Uncle Joe. Off. Uncle Joe. Hell yeah. Hell, man. Frank on occasion, That's but right. we won't go there. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and so so he got involved. We were all three. Our three families were all involved. So we had the gaslight. And we had Burton's Caper House. Burton's Caper, Caper House. Yeah, you know where that is. Uh -uh. No, sir. Well, that was reflection. reflection. That's all right. There we oh, go. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now, yes. of course, it's fourteen oh eight. Fourteen oh eight. Yeah. So well, yeah. and Oinker did run a little establishment out of there yeah. for a little bit for a yeah. long time, right? Yeah. He he. I bought this place from him in 96 okay okay so oinker then was reduced to just being out there mm -hmm. and he had that up until he sold that yeah yeah to them and and like uh they had pretty good food i mean that that full restaurant and oh, bar yeah. on the one side and then the the event venue on the other side before Burton's did you ever go in there before house. it was remodeled burton's caper house there. i did not realize i that think that was some the name of my of fondest memories uh Oh yeah, was that the uh, the QU banquets mm -hmm. and all the stuff that we would go out there? Matter of fact, I think I tried to steal a pan of chicken from him one time, <laughs> and then I probably would have got away with the whole crime if it wasn't for those. No, I've never heard. had a been sweaty trusty stop. Well, no, a buddy <laughs> of mine had lost had left his phone there, so we had to go back for the phone, and then whenever I come back, I was then uh, interrogated by. Uh, oinker for allegedly uh he goes i don't care about the damn chicken i just want my 
fucking pan back. You know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. We'll get it back. To so you. I, 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 so yeah. you dumped I all the fried dumped, chicken yeah, in your front seat? Guarantee it. It probably ended up in the floorboard. And, and then I brought the pan back in. Jeez. But yeah. You're it, a mess. I am. That was awesome times, though. That's good good time. work, though. I'm proud of you. Yeah. So really, that's a, so that's a, a lot of history there to kind of unload coming forward but you've been at the helm since 96 i think what's cool about this is the family business aspect of it your boys are here yeah and and they run and operate and they work and and i've always heard people talk about you don't get in the food business unless you're willing to make it a family business and then you dedicate all your time to it yeah you're so what's the with the historical perspective there what's the future hold here especially with now, don't yeah. give us any industry secrets, but oh. just, you know. Well, especially the unprecedented times, because we've never seen anything like COVID. I mean, no, we've never, unless you, I mean, this place wasn't here in 1918. Yeah, like during the bubonic <laughs> uh, play. Yeah, no, that's, that was in the dark. Age. That's what I mean. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think it was See, there's that whole that history, that that thing. thing. No yeah. clue that he hey, realized. Hey, did you know that this guy is probably one of the <laughs> sharpest tacks in the bulletin board, like, no, no, no. Oh, bullshit. Dudley, I've got some guys that grew up around this cat, and they're like, hey, that guy there is smart as shit. I know. So, he's keeping you in check. Well, we might need to. <laughs> might be a new couch guy. Yeah, he's maybe bring now. him he's on he's... for fact checking <laughs> yeah. my dumb ass. So what's, I mean, because when you look at what happened in 2000, right. 20, 2020. March. Ex- specifically. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I took my CDL test that day yep. up in Linton or Mitchell, Indiana, mm-hmm. and we were on our way back and we got a call from our boss saying, hey, when you get back, just clock out and go home and don't come back until we need you. And I thought, oh, my God, Dudley, are we getting fired? <laughs> like, what, what the <laughs> hell's going on? And then come to find out that's, yeah, we, we they yeah. Shut, shut the city well, down and that's, locked the doors. And it's kind of a... A wild time. It's extremely wild. Because I had accepted a position up at the resort, supposed to be started. Here I shut down <laughs> my little business. Yeah. Uh, and there you to were, go. But you uh they're starving to death. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it all worked out. But shaking a can, panning. Oh my surprised God. he wasn't up here in front, John, by the old front door here. That's okay. I could have put him in on the dish now. I, I could, of course hey. you got an automatic dishwasher now. So oh, yeah. my. Well, you gotta you gotta automate. You gotta automate to save a little money. That's awesome. So so 2020, how'd you weather that storm? Uh, very precariously. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, we were like everybody. I think we were shut down for about a week. And then I think they came on board and said, okay, yeah, you can start doing contactless car- pickup. Out. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I mean, it was like, so we kind of towed, you know, danced around it, tiptoed around it. And uh, I had a plan, you know, I've, I've gone through three fires up here, so I've always had some kind of a plan, you know, you gotta, you gotta be prepared for some of these things. And this uh, guy is working his ass off. I know we ought to talk to you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Delivery dude is definitely winning. He's a good guy. Nate's a good guy. Nate's Nate's a good good guy. Shout out Nate. Shout out Nate. Good guy. (laughs) There you go, Nate. You can get on the wandering Dutchman and watch these guys. He's he's not even listening. He's locked in. (laughs) Oh, we were just telling you that you, you're winning so far today, man. You're, you, uh, are you a podcast guy, Nate? Uh, not much. Okay, well, now you are. Well, now you can be. <laughs> the Wandering Dutchman. Check us out. Is who we are. Check us out. We're a little small operation, but we're growing. We'd love for you to go ahead, like, subscribe, share with all your buddies. <laughs> you got a lot of time in the truck. We are perfect for it. So get that phone about, out. Look, yeah. they, they talk about things like hair care products. Let me tell you. What <laughs> oh, right well. on the mark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Hey, have a good day. Happy New Year. Happy, New Year. Happy New Year. So, so 2020, a lot of the carry out business yeah, uh, probably helped some. Yeah, uh, that helped a lot. I mean, obviously – you know whether whether people are far against it, whatever they they did have that government program the ppp yeah. loan mm-hmm. and i know there's a lot of shady dealings that went on yeah with, but for me 
what I did with it was what it was supposed to be done with it. I kept my people working. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the remodel, talking about the front room and yep. stuff like that. That's yep. when a lot of that right. took place. I and if like, they if they build those subsidies in and they and they offer those programs, you would be a fool to not use Absolutely. Yeah. So so we did and I think by Ju- June, the end of June we were allowed to be fifty percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then things kind of progressed from there. Of course, as the fall came back in, you know, with any kind of flu or any yeah. you know, seasonal problem. Yeah. Once it started getting cold out, you Ramps know, back up. We were doing our Raider Wednesday thing. We did the fall, and then things just went bonkers. That again. first kind of, <laughs> and, and we we canceled the winter edition of Raider Wednesday here. And we just kind of muddled our way through, and you know, things picked up. People wanted to get out. Hey, oh, I bet. You know, so so yeah. How was that? Like, I bet. I mean, I, I bet it went from zero to a hundred real quick. It did. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, whenever people come, they're all stir crazy and you know going nuts and wanting to get the hell out. I imagine then it was probably Katie bar the door. Yeah, and we, what we would do is we would set up like we had a table in between a table. So yes, you, you know we we couldn't afford. You know, I, I know you went to some places they had plexiglass up. And oh they yeah, had all this. Up. I'm sitting there going, "Holy cow, man! Either a you do have a lot of money, or b you know somebody gave it to you. I don't know." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and now kind of looking at the science of some of that, the table in between probably didn't do a whole lot. It, of work. It, it, <laughs> Not a chance. No. No. But we're not going to go into there because we don't. We don't. Take uh, but you know, kind of the bad thing. Your business wasn't immune to it like anybody else's, but no. the labor after that, because you had people that wanted to get out. They wanted to spend money. They were spending money local because mm-hmm. I know we saw it at the resort. We had some very great months because people wanted to stay local because you didn't have the uncertainty in the travel. But although a family, you know, family operation, mm-hmm. your two boys you only got two of them. I only have two. I got, got a daughter, but I told her to stay out. Yeah, there. well, yeah, that, if you're she's, wise. She's only junior in high school. Yeah. But, you know, we keep she, in out. due time. But, you know, you ran into the labor shortage. How oh, did you my. weather that storm? It's still going on. Yeah. And actually, for the food industry, it's always going on. Yeah. I mean, it's... it's Nothing new. Prior to COVID, we've... I've been looking for a line cook or two for years. Yeah. You know? You'll get some here and there, and they may last, they may not. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was phenomenal then because then if they got sick, they, you, they, they had to stay home. Yeah. You know, so not only was there a shortage, but then if they got sick, they, they had to stay home. Exactly. Yeah. They had to isolate so, per so. the CDC reg. Yeah, so there again, there's no – Coming to work with a snotty nose or anything none like that. that. Yeah, none, none of that, that shit. You know, and, and we did it for years. Not necessarily that they were, you know, sick, sick, but, you know. Yeah. We just. And it's it's here, you know, you got to, it's kind of a double-edged sword because you got to find line cooks. You got to find prep cooks. You got to find all pizza these cooks. pizza cooks, all these different things. Plus, you got to, you got to. uh have a full bar staff. You got to have a wait staff. You got to have. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of cogs in this yeah. in this wheel. You know. Yeah, we're currently uh, over 20 people, 24 people, I think, working here. You That's know? crazy. So we're not a small. We're not mm. a big operation, but we're not a small operation. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when you know, and and that's the thing that uh, I don't think people quite gather when you walk in, and we seat about 130 people, and if one person calls in. Oh, yeah. That's just throwed everything into a tailspin, uh, depending on what person it is. Yes. You know? Yeah. Uh, the carryout. I mean, we still do. And, and since COVID, our carryout is still. Very, very lucrative. We're, we're, we're probably 6% higher on carryout wow. to this day. Wow. Yet. Wow than what we were well it's easy you know what i mean like i i'm i am uh, definitely a, a strong proponent in that just because with the kids and everybody's mm-hmm. busy and you know sometimes i just want to come kids. home and the kids yeah. <laughs> goddamn <laughs> kids you know and you just you know grab a pie on the way home a sure. couple sandwiches whatever and then you can yeah just throw it on the stove and say here have at it you know what i mean but now we you mentioned <clears throat> you you've got a lot of different things going on up here uh, you talked about the nightlife business. You're still a big spot for live music. I mean, that's what we did when we had our shindig. Talk a little bit about the live music offered here, kind of the origin story, the goals with it, the struggles with it, what you hope to do with it. Because I think it's a, there's 
I was at a wedding and I was talking to a guy that is associated with the Studebakers. Mm -hmm. And you're familiar with the Studebakers. You guys, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. They've been around a but long time. But he said, you know, uh, one of the guys, it was his wedding, and he said, he was a big fan of them. And I said, well, you know, what's what's killing, like, the live music, the bands that used to have? And his response was, your generation doesn't go listen and watch. Mm -hmm. Like, the older generations, like, prior to us, probably, you know, that fifth you know those folks that are in their 50s and 40s and it's changed so rapidly like i can remember <laughs> oh, sorry huh? dave i can remember like as a 21 year old fresh in the market of drinking you know because oh, that's when yeah yeah okay yeah that's when we started yeah i can remember coming here the night before thanksgiving or going over to the overtime the night before thanksgiving or going to ron's or any just just here in town in general yeah and literally Packed. Not being able to get in the building because of the fire, the fire marshal. Mm. Like, hey, we're at capacity, man. You can't come. Mm. You know what I mean? And I and I know that's happened in recent years, but like you said, man, and and John, I'm sure you see it all the time. But there, it is not the same. People just don't they don't do it anymore. And I don't know why that I is. We were knocking on a hundred and twenty people here on the Dutchman night. Oh, you were. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. somebody had to drink all those three hundred beers, and it wasn't us. <laughs> yeah. And I know there was still yeah. drinking after those yeah. three hundred beers was going on. <laughs> so, talk about like the live music, the scene, like what you guys try to do with that. Uh, for us, and seeing here's the thing, I'll give you a quick little history on it. Then, uh, get up in your mic a little bit, John. All right, there we go. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I'm all the way up. In you, well, we can. You got a little room there. Yeah, I, oh, I, I see. You guys, I'm, 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 I'm a rookie on this. Yeah, you're well, good. And you're not a portly a, fellow. No, so. you got a lot of room. <laughs> yeah, we, we got to be buried. Yeah, we got to get up there. It hides a little Just bit. Ask TikTok user six so, nine seven eight one. <laughs> yeah, he's oh Pete. Uh, yeah, but anyway, the thing is, here's what's so ironic. What was the building originally built for? Movies. Movies. Entertainment. The entertainment. Yeah. Entertainment. And so, you know, it just kind of, it, it's got food now, lots of good food, but yeah, it's, sure. still, it's still entertainment. And, uh, you know, it progressed. Oinker brought it back in. Like you said, disco, you know, the ball and all that. We got it going on. But when I got <laughs> so back, it, it's crazy. I would have loved to be here on a no disco joke. night. Hey, I, no, I parachute, I, not parachute pants, but uh, what leisure that? suits, leisure. bell bottoms, oh, bell, yeah, bell bottoms, high heel shoes. Could you imagine stomping your just getting that dance? Who was that? Ann Comus was in here one night. You, know, you guys know Ann Comus. Oh, right? no, no clue. No. no clue. Anyway, yeah, she they got mad at me because I was running the strobe light too much, but anyway, <laughs> 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 uh. But uh, for what we're doing now, I mean, I, I turned it back in. Oinker kind of let it go when I got the place. He hadn't done much entertainment. And then I kind of brought it back. And, boy, yeah, prior to 03, when we were talking about the, the, the DD stuff earlier, mm -hmm. uh, man, this was like a mini rock and roll frat house almost I mean, <laughs> you walk in the back you know the big walls area so you and it, it, it was 21 and unders could still come back to a certain point you know yeah it wasn't like just all 21 back here people today still there are still people think that, that you can't come that down you the can't ramp. come down the ramp and it's yeah. like yeah no that's done yeah uh, but uh but uh yeah this place you, you just walked in it was like where, where, where am I at? <laughs> we won't talk about the couch either. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. well, there was a couch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that probably had the cure for cancer. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Revolutionized. I sent the boys out back. This has been about 01 or 02, so I sent the boys out. might have been Bless and Schneiders mm -hmm. to get a foosball table. Okay. We were going to put a foosball table in just for a little fun. They come back with a couch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my Lord. It's set right about there on the dance floor up against that wall. That yeah. The, the, yep. And it was here for about a year and a half, I think. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. I guess I was lucky enough to be uh, pre the couch. Yeah. <laughs> but needless to say, moving forward, you know, history and as you get older and, and it is amazing because I'm a young guy yet, but uh, you just look back at some of this stuff and you're going, okay, so we were rocking in the early 2000s and then we kind of took a hiatus and uh, I got a little crazy and opened up another place and that created a lot of problems and, and so on and so forth. And then we had the 08 drop down. Oh, yeah. Then I had some more issues and yada, yada, yada. So about 11 
12 years ago already. Thir- yeah, is that right? Yeah. 12, yeah, 12 years 12, ago. 12, 13 years ago. We started doing the, the entertainment again. And we brought in the open mic, which ran for eight or oh, nine yeah. Yeah. years. And, and uh, man, we were having some good times. Yeah, Thursday we, nights. That was a good Thursdays time. were great. And then the weekends, you know, we still had that supply of that older group you're talking about. And you're absolutely right about the, the, the age deal with the kids not wanting to come in. I mean, they got used to being at home. They got used to being outside. Yeah. So the indoor venues, at least what I see, and I talk to a lot of my band people too, and they see the same thing all over the country. Yeah. I've got, you know, the Nick Dittmars that tour the country and the Sugarline Blues. That I think they're doing a gig for New Year's Eve in Colorado. Wow. Oh, cool. You know, yeah. they're all over. The, these people are all over. The country. So they see it. It's not it's, just our it's area. It's not just our area. And so... Boy, right before COVID, I think we had – that was another deal. Like I said, that we had a band in here on the, that Saturday. And I mean, if anybody was going to get sick, they were going to get sick because <laughs> we were just yeah. banging. Because there was – I mean, there was people down – because that was, I think, one time – it, it might have been there was a, like same same situation. There was like a bunch of people at the Holland Legion, and one guy had it. Yeah, and then the, you find out like two days later, you know, whenever the old loan shark, the loan sharks of the health department start doing their old contact tracing phone mm-hmm. calls, were you at this location at this time and date? And we're like, oh shit, you know what I do? What the security camera? Well, no, such and such, uh, five persons removed uh, had COVID. And I'm like, yeah. oh shit, you know okay, what I mean? Yeah, but there you go. Yeah. yeah, that's I can only imagine. And so yeah, so after that, then coming back now, it's all different. Thursday still kind of works, but the the weekend gigs Mm -hmm. they're just a coin flip you know you don't know what's going to shake because like i said everybody habits you know yeah it's like anything if we would shut down here for a month let's say and you're used to getting your pizza or hoagie from me Mm -hmm. and i'm not here for a month and you decide to try out group a or group b right after three or four weeks, those habits change. You're right. And 21 days, actually, yeah, I think. Yeah, I 21 think, days. I think you're right. We'd have to fact. Well, if that's you're going to. Three weeks. Yeah. Huh? That's three weeks. Yeah. yeah that's 21 three weeks. days. So, yeah. you're, so your habits change. And so people got. <laughs> I, I'm going with what May said. See? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just surprised I'm, you're agreed. You're in agreement. <laughs> God. But, uh, but, yeah. And, I mean, and, and so you we took two months of saying you can't go anywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And well, almost three. Yeah. And people got used to staying at home. Right. People got used to going to other people's. I houses. know for a fact that whenever the first time, one of the few times that we actually did go out to eat after they opened the gates up with my kids, it's like that they were neanderthals that were just emerging from the cave after mm-hmm. being locked up all winter and it was like we're never going out again ever Can't tell you like, how many times i've told my kids to act like they've been in public before yeah <laughs> like especially after that it's like oh god but then the little one i'm like well shit i guess maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, soft skills I, you gotta work has yeah. it become more of a and, and this is going back to our event here i mean we took a little bit of a gamble halloween weekend right um but it worked out we're gonna say it worked out because we pushed it hard and we got great fans and they showed up. But they show up for shit. There's they a strategy. There's a strategy to it now, right? You can't just throw out whoever on a Saturday in June and expect right. it to work. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, sitting here right now, and, and again, you can talk to anybody that's in the business, like I'm in, and and like I said, I call. I'm in the entertainment business, right? You know, I sell food and drinks, and we do stuff, but. Technically speaking, people go out to be entertained, entertained whether yeah. it's through a meal or through a drink or through entertainment itself. So, so I'm sitting here going, I'm already six months down the road. Yeah. The only thing I haven't booked up much yet is live entertainment. Right. Just because it's such a gamble anymore, even if I do push it, uh, we just don't know. But the Thursday thing, like I said, that's just an easy dinner kind of mm-hmm. seven to nine. Got yep. somebody up here picking and grinning, and and it's easy, and mm-hmm. and, and I'm not really looking for big, 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 uh, big pushbacks. Pop, just yeah. more diners, yeah, than anything. 
and uh, so that's kind of where it is right now. But I'm a, I'm always down the road. Like we've got Supper Bowl and Mardi Gras, and and soon it'll be March Madness, mm -hmm. and then St. Patty's Day, and yep. Valentine's Day. Boy, that's gonna be a rough week, guys. Jeez, oh, Pete. Why? Well, Supper Bowl is Sunday. Yeah. Fat Tuesday is Tuesday, and yeah. Valentine's is Wednesday. Oh, oh shoot. God. And that weekend, we got first in Maine playing. Oh, boy. <laughs> wow, that is a busy that is time a to busy buckle track. up. You know, and, and that's why I said, so I've got all this stuff planned already. Yeah. Right, yeah. Because you always got to be thinking ahead. And then, yeah. like you said, with like when you have last-minute cancellations and everything like that, sometimes you got a plan B, and other times you don't. And you just yeah. got to roll with it. Yeah, so, hey, handle. we got the we got the entertainment business covered in the live one music. more thing before okay. we go to the okay. entertainment business okay. unless okay. this is where your canoe was pointed well yeah where our go buddy ahead. our buddy up in indy who todd mccomas yeah oh yeah go he'd love he'd love this place oh i know we so we had talked to you before about doing some oh yeah some comedy stuff mm -hmm. and everything like that and we got a guy okay casey go ahead yeah we i need we need to send todd some when we're here today we need to cut a reel so Todd sold out to Astra. What was that? A few years ago. Mm -hmm. that, that's where we met him. But we were fortunate enough when we started this podcast that mm -hmm. he kind of we kind of reached out. For we some made advice. a relationship that night when we went over there to the pot, to the Astra, and because he was on Pat McAfee's show. Okay. And then we met him over at the Astra, and we're like, "Hey, we're going to this. We're going to Snaps, right? Where Jacob Jacob was bartending yeah, at the yeah, time." Yeah. Uh, and I said, hey, we're going down to Snaps. We're going to drink beer after the show. Do you want to go? And he's like, I like beer. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, we'll go. So, unbelievably, he followed us back to the back to Snaps, sat at our table. We ended up getting annihilated, made a, huge, made a great conversation, made a great uh, friendship and relationship with him. Well, then fast forward a couple years, we start this podcast thing, and David was asking questions on, you know, what kind of, what website or what, what service were we going to use to, uh, basically push our, distribute, distribute our content, uh, across the internet. And I just said, I told Casey, I said, piss on it. I'm just going to shoot uncle Todd, Todd a message and see if he gets back with us and asked him. Cause he, he's obviously a successful podcast, mm -hmm. podcaster by this point messaged him up and the guy got, he, he hit us back and I thought, no way, you know, and, and, and that's what, I think it's like the the podcasting thing is so cool because everybody is like, you know, yeah, sometimes it's frustrating whenever, you know, things happen and this you got to work through it. But everybody's always so supportive when this like in the podcasting world, because it's it's just it's a new uh, era of, you know, like information consumption and everybody wants, sure you know, more podcasts. So. Todd was like, yeah, this is what I did. You guys should be great with it. It's It should be set up just for you. Uh, try it out. See what you think. And the rest was history. He met up with and in, in, in Indy, he agreed to uh, meet up with us up in Indy. We went up to Indy and did like a. We did this whole setup in a hotel room. Yeah, in a suite. Like whenever it we was. were. <laughs> when we were carrying all this equipment in the building, I'm. Yeah, we had to tell the lady at the front desk that we weren't shooting porn. Like, it's, it's nothing, nothing. Yeah, like, it's a bunch of 300-pound-plus dudes walking in with a bunch of camera equipment. You know, they're thinking, oh. And that guy with his mustache. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, you know. But So, yeah, Uncle Todd, great. Uh, he's a true crime podcaster. He's got several true crime podcasts. He, he He's a stand-up comic, and he is hilarious. He's actually a retired Indiana State Indiana State Police uh, narcotics agent, undercover <laughs> oh undercover agent. So a lot of his stories and in his bits are from his experience from his experiences oh, yeah. with the force. But yeah. he he is hilarious, and we've we've told him about it, and uh, he's all about it. So we'll have to make that. We'll have yeah. to get that scheduled and get Uncle Todd down here yeah. because he we'll have is, to. He's hilarious. That would be fine because I, I ironically speaking, there's a guy local who's yeah. been hitting me up. Yeah, we're friends with yeah Curtis Curtis Crow. Yep. Yeah, he's and, been on our he's, show, and I've yeah. been on his and. Yeah, he's 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 a different genre of comic, you know, but like he he's still pretty funny. I, I and you so. know, and here's the thing. For the entertainment business, it's not just about music. 
You're right. You know, I mean, right. that's why I said we, we've done comedy in here mm-hmm. years ago. I yeah. mean, uh, we tried it. We've done, of course, I keep getting browbeat by some of my staff. We need karaoke back. Oh, like, God. Oh, boy. Oh. That turns into a phooey. Oh, I love karaoke. I do too. Like, <laughs> and you're good at it. David's good at it. Oh, really? Oh, Very you good. Go, by God. Very His good. His voice yeah, is a baby. mix of Fergie and Jesus. He sang, oh, he sang uh, for Overboard that night up here. I don't know. If I, th- I think you that. had already I'm cashed out. Gone. Oh, yeah. yeah that's that's yeah. when I understand that the kid gloves came off. I think somebody <laughs> might have got up on the stage and said, okay, John's gone. Now let's go. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Everybody that's, put it on that's John's That's the story, <laughs> that's the story <laughs> man. No, we uh, we had a blast that night. But yeah, comedy and uh, like, you know, we, we talked about some like improv stuff, sure. you know, back in the day or whatever like that. But yeah. So we'll have to get something going with Uncle Todd and get something down here and get us a comedy show scheduled, and uh, we might be able to MC that. Yeah, we can work too. that out. That'd no be dangerous. And everything it. like that. <clears throat> Again, the versatility of the gas light. That's yeah. for sure. So let's talk about, you've talked about the pizza, you talk about the hoagies a little bit. We've talked about the building, but let's dive deeper into the food. That's what I want. Aspect that, of yeah, it. That's ah. where I was So going. you've got a very unique menu because you've got some traditional dinner items. Mm-hmm. Then you've got the hoagies, mm-hmm. and you've got probably let's you know the pizzas. Yeah, is, right. is the big thing. Yeah. So that traditional dinner menu thing is nice if you're not into the hoagies and you're not into the pizza. Right. Um, I don't order from that part of the menu very no. often. I usually don't go into that area. No. Your hoagies, though, uh, we could start with the hoagies. Just a unique blend and combination of you got a classic stromboli right you've even got a classic like hot ham and cheese Mm -hmm. right you do the italian uh, the italian Mm -hmm. which is not italian which is not yeah it's just the dressing (laughs) that we use at the end yeah you've got the johnny dart that's where i want to go and then let's get into that let's get into that and then well hold on i I know this is a good story the sicilian is probably my favorite oh and then when you put that on the pizza oh that's even better because yeah. that's uh, it's unreal. But so we'll, let, let's, let's go to the Johnny Dark. Let's do it. <laughs> you want you want the Johnny? Yes. Uh, let's hear the Johnny Dark story. I th- and it's not only me and Casey and David that want to know the juice, but you would not believe how many times that I have like either bringing people that have never been here before, or like when I worked at the mine, there was a lot of guys that would have to go to Jasper for some random reason, or have to go up to here this way, you know, that didn't live in this area. And they're always like, where's a good place to eat in Huntingburg? And at the time, it was, you know, the gaslight, you know, because there wasn't anywhere else to go. Right, right. And because it was, you know, the place to go to eat, you know. Yeah. And they're like, okay, what's good there? And I always would say the Johnny Dart. Johnny. And they're like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, <laughs> just order it. it. Just order it, and then you will see. God, I love Johnny. I do, too. So, go. Go. <laughs> I think it was 1986 or 87. That's when I was born, by the way. Yeah, just okay, so you know. There you go. Well, I was <laughs> already carousing, you might say. Uh, had graduated college, working here. Yeah, late night. No food in the house. Living at home yet, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, this way it works. And uh, so I start rummaging around in the refrigerator and i start seeing ingredients um, i may not have been of sound mind for sure <laughs> yeah. for sure which which by the way just to take a quick pause probably is some of the best uh ingredient or like what, what am i trying to say Rec- creation creations yes, sometimes yes. is when some of the best uh creations are created is whenever you are really uh locked in oh yeah yeah you know and and so yeah so it was like okay so i found you know corned beef of all things yeah that's wild things, to me corned beef, which yeah. i love a good reuben oh sure oh, we yeah make, yes, and we sir. make a good reuben. That, yes you and do. i left that, that off we did I, leave that off and that's reuben. that's a uh, yes traditional stuff. uh but yeah so it was like okay here's this didn't want any lettuce. No. Just wanted meat and cheese. Yes. And something to make it taste good. Yes. And I wanted my nose to run a little bit. Right. So you find the cheese. Yep. And you find the couple of different dressings. Yes. And you're thinking, well, what's the what's the runner? Well, hey, cayenne pepper. You can't Bingo. go wrong with cayenne pepper. Right. So so the 
the Johnny Dart was then created. <laughs> wow. It it stewed for about 13 years. I Did think. it really? It, it just, nobody, nobody. I mean, I put it on the menu when I got here, yeah. basically. Yeah. And that would have been 96. And it just, yeah, after it, it even then, it just kind of well, h- when, hovered around. Whenever right? you explain it to someone and they're like, what? It's got what on it, you know? Yeah. And then you go into the, like I said, we're not going to give away any industry secrets. No, but no, they're like, I'd have to kill you. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but it's like, you know, it's got this, and I think it's this, but I don't know for sure. And then it's got some cayenne on the top, and they're like, what? You know what I mean? That is, that's so weird. And I'm like, dude, it'll blow your mind. Yeah. It's like a sleeper, you know what I mean? It's a sleeper cell, you know what I mean? It's oh, a yeah. silent assassin. <clears throat> and I think it's awesome. Gosh, I love it. I do, too. So, so yeah, so, but here, here in recent years, yes, it has finally achieved the, the status <laughs> it that deserves. It, it deserves. <laughs> uh, I, I personally don't eat many of them anymore. Right. I, I do on occasion, but yeah. I mean, let's face it, guys, I've probably ate every menu item up here at least 50 or 75 or 100 times. Well, sure. I don't know. For Pete, sure. Or no, more. I've, I've been known to eat pizza seven days a week for months. Yeah. You yeah, know. for sure. Uh, and, I, and if whenever you're cranking out the quality, you know that you do crank out. I mean, I don't yeah, really I mean, see a problem with eating that kind of pizza. No, seven not days at all. A week. I mean, and you know, and here again, and hit, hit, hit you mentioned quality, and and we do buy the best ingredients that we can afford to keep the price reasonable. For exactly, everybody. and I think that's a battle. Like we were talking earlier about the whole grocery store debacles and everything yeah. else. But I mean, yeah, that there again with. The way prices are and everything like that, it's got to be tough in the long run. But affording the best ingredients and making it, yeah, making it affordable for the consumer, I think, right. is probably it's, it's is a, a battle. When I do the menu every year, which I do do the menu, you have to go through and do. I am a numbers guy, by the way. So if you need a tallyer or some kind, yeah, just, just let me know. But, I mean, every year you, and you sit there and you wrestle with, okay, what's competition doing yeah number one for sure and then you start looking at now do you need scouts well i have done that in the past you need some scouts maybe we could do uh, maybe we could do some black ops recon for for shoppers yeah Yeah. Yeah. you know that yeah maybe we could do some scouts we can go on some scouting missions for you if you need you'll be set on a budget though (laughs) (laughs) so why so going back to the johnny dart Obviously, your name's John. So that's is that where the Johnny Dart came from? Uh, yes. And actually, you know, this has been a dart haven for decades. Exactly also. right. One of and the few dart leagues left. One right? of the yeah. one of the many things that the, that that the gaslight actually harbors that not very many people know of. Yeah. And, and there are some absolute dime droppers around here. Like as far as dart throwers no. go, there's some really good dart throwers. They've, they've, they've kind of retired. Though. Yeah. We're, we're getting closer to the, <clears throat> I don't want to say the exit, but it's definitely getting thinner. You know, people, if I could, if I could, out. if I could swing it, I would do it because I love throwing darts. As a matter of fact, uh, me and the Bushy Boys, we oh, yeah. we went. Uh, Zach's got a hell of a nice setup in his basement. We we threw some cricket the other night. You know, mm, I really enjoy time. it. Smoke dog, you got one out in the lounge. I like throwing darts. You like throwing darts? I'm not real good at it. I know it's tough. Very frustrating. I'll throw you left handed then. There's not a chance. You want to know who the biggest, you. Mr. Uncle Bob Meyer? He's, he 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 <laughs> caught me on that one the other night. He said, "Hey, I'll I'll throw." What whatever it was, he said, I'll throw left handed, and then they were like, "Well, you are left handed, you son of a bitch." You know what I mean? so, he can shoot pool like pretty good, really. Good. Well, and that's yeah. the, talking about darts and talking. You know, smoke brings up pool. A lot of those things have left these businesses. Yes, they're not. I mean, I don't know. You guys probably never had a pool table. Never up had here. a pool table. No, had, had a foosball. We did end up with a foosball. There you go. Couch, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, had the, after the couch, we did end up with a foosball table. Yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, Ron's, those places. Yeah, they just they're they're yeah. Ron's. What Ron's always used to have the pool league. They've got yeah. Jr. still has. Pool Jr. League. still has pool league, and then. Well, it's the same pool league. Just <laughs> and then of. what? And then what else was it? Like the overtime, they used the overtime to, they, they just had a valley table a in the back for fun. Yeah. You know Lake what I mean? Oasis and Ferdinand is part of that pool league. Is that yeah. right? But then here, the darts, and I think the darts is is probably uh, 
I mean, like, in its in its day, it was probably a oh, big it was deal. huge. Yeah. I mean, and and hence the name Johnny Dart because yes, I threw a lot of darts. I'm not nearly as good as I used to be, right? Because I used to throw every day. Were you good with numbers before darts? Oh, absolutely. Okay, I knew this old guy that I worked with back in the day, and he was really good with numbers, but most of it came from him throwing darts, like <laughs> just quick math to know oh, what yeah. he needed to yeah. do to close subtracting. Out. Subtracting, yeah. That's tough. All right. I'm not good at it. Yeah. You would need to bring somebody to do your... Or a calculator. What is that fancy... A bit... A bit. Ab- abacus. 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 There you go. I don't even know what that means. I mean, John, I struggled with <laughs> algorithm, yeah. but I'm on the a old heater. Algorithm. The old algorithm. <laughs> yeah, but I'm back in Let's now. not bring up stats either. Yeah, we, we don't need... It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was time. There were four places. There was here. There was the VF, yeah. which is where it originated. Yeah. That was the VF, and then it came here. Do they still have boards up there? I, I don't know. How I know. I've been in there for I've a while there, either. Man. But, yeah, in the mid, mid-80s, mid man, I mean, yeah, we had four different locations. And we were playing four boards in each location, and you were playing four people on a team. Wow. And so you had... Quite the draw then. Yeah, we had about seventy five guys and and women. Oh yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. There were a couple of women teams that would just no shit wanted to ruin their husband's <laughs> night away from them. <laughs> and oh, uh, you joined the dart league? Funny, oh, I've been practicing. Hey, that's kind of weird because I signed up last yeah. week. Yeah, yeah, and, love and, playing darts with the girls. <laughs> oh yeah, we will kick your ass. Yeah. Uh, I guarantee you. And so, so we had four different places, and then at the end of the night, one place would be the blind draw place to go to, and so everybody would kind to congregate at one place Mm -hmm. this went on for four or five six years cool i think there was such an era yeah we missed i know because it was all right before us bring it back we've talked about bringing a lot of things back Mm -hmm. i like darts i do too man bars yeah bars (laughs) and music (laughs) predominantly i like bars things that come with them now i've always heard jukebox fan i've always heard the old adage that pool tables only bring you trouble hey that's all you never yeah yeah yeah. i've always heard that from a certain source the only place you ever got some wisdom go play pools in a pool hall and even there you have issues because you know you got the sharks out there yeah you know you got the sandbag the bible salesman man i tell you suckers that's not pretty we seen so Justine and I had a unique experience a while back. I, I, it, it was we, we had to take the dog to the vet. It was down in the, in the Princeton, and it was it was probably a very unique. And I could be uh, giving away our future business model, so I don't know if I should say it or not. But I'll just say it anyway because I don't really care, and I know well, it'll. Thanks. Be, I can edit it out if it's that big of a deal. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> if it's some earth shattering. No, thing. this place was a it was a breakfast spot. You know, and it was, I mean, it was probably seven thirty, eight o'clock in the morning their time, and it was packed on a weekday. Okay. And they had a breakfast bar, not a buffet, but like a breakfast menu and everything, mm-hmm. and a pool table. And there was probably 10, 15, 20 guys in there, and I, I think they were playing nine ball. But they, you know, it's like they, that was like a thing that they had, and I, and I was, Justine That's- and I were having breakfast and i'm like man you you do not see that anymore you know what well, I mean? they like, got a big third shift yeah uh, toyota but population. a lot of these guys were just retired gentlemen oh. and stuff like that too you know so i don't know you just you know you don't you don't see that very often i told these guys i said man that would be cool to have like a little breakfast spot somewhere with a pool table or a, some sort of uh I don't want to be screwdrivers. Sh- uh huh. Yeah, I don't want to be chauvinistic, but like a, a gentleman's game. You know what I mean? Where it would be like a dart or a pool mm-hmm. or whatever shuffleboard, shuffleboard oh, or yeah. foosball or whatever that would be. You know. So I don't know. I just think that's neat. So yeah, it's um. I always wanted the. You mentioned pool halls. Roadhouse is one of my favorite movies, <laughs> and I've always wanted to operate like a roadhouse establishment. Well, in the early 80s, this was probably pretty close, close to that. The problem with that, John, is in the early 80s, I didn't exist, yeah, and I, I didn't know. get to the uh, chance to be 20. Late to the game. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit late to the game. Yeah. So we so we go back into the menu okay. to reel back in. And like Casey said earlier, you know, when you, the Sicilian, yes. which everybody, when they say Sicilian, they're thinking like some big old meaty deep dish pizza. Right, right. And, and it's not that. Yeah. Oh, not not at all. But it's a perfect combination. But it is. So where did that originate? That would have been Wendy. Yeah. Wendy came up with that probably 
78 or something. Wow. So, yeah, some, I mean, you're right. Some, these sandwiches have been been around for a minute. Yeah. Uh, but they've not always been pizzas, though. No, we did that a few years ago. So, what? Right? So, I, I don't mean to jump around, but. Well. We, like, when it comes from these sandwich creations that have been hoagies forever, and you say, let's put them on a pizza. Mm-hmm. I. Like that's earth shattering Game to changer. me. Yeah, Game but how did it? How did it get to that point where, you, where you sitting around? You had too many cocktails, and you're like, I bet this would be good on a pizza. <laughs> you ran out of bread because in because what is it? Is it necessity? Is the um, something of invention? Yeah, yeah uh, create. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever, 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 whatever. Were you out of? Were you yeah, out of hoagie? Some more shit about. That. Were you? All, were you out of hoagie buns? And you, you you're like, well, shit. No. Let's just get a pizza crust. Boom, and then you. Put these no, things on no. there. Let's 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 go back to the the annals of our youthful age groups now. Okay, and they are all into snapping photos and oh yeah, eating odd things mm-hmm. and finding new things and explaining this. And so we're sitting here going, well, what can we do that would be along that same vein of here's something new for you try it this way and that's where that came from i guarantee it it was a home run because that johnny dart pizza on that and that like we don't come to the gaslight without leaving with one you know what i mean yeah i mean there was times where we weren't even in the area we were maybe in jasper doing something or somewhere somewhere and i don't know how many times i'd stop in poke my head in the back hey andy pizza is the oven on yeah, dude, it never goes off. And I was like, 40 bucks, large dart pizza. He's like, You're you got it, brother. You know what I mean? And 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 I mean it is it's it was like a staple there for a while. Justine's like, You've got another pizza? I'm like, Yeah. Don't act like you're not gonna eat it, you yeah. know. But then that Sicilian pizza mm-hmm. uh, with those t- those the pepperonis on top mm-hmm. when they cup up like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is the little pepperonis. Yeah, yes. the little pepperonis. I love the little pepperonis. That's cat's oh, ass. That's there. always been a staple. We used to slice those. We'd get the sticks in and we, we, we yeah, I know. Slice <laughs> them. Yeah, and, uh, you know, sometimes they get a little oblong on there, but for the most part, you know, we, we just. The other game changer for me, like you said earlier, with the corned beef, and then you said, like, you guys make a quality Reuben, which you do. Your Reuben sandwich is badass. But the pizza. Oh yeah, the Reuben pizza, pizza yes. with the caper seed is what? What the hell? Caraway seeds. Caraway seeds. Yeah, yeah. to, to mimic those, uh, to kind of get that pumpernickel rye mm-hmm. and all that shit, you know. But like that, that pizza there is it's a it's a unique pizza, but I can destroy one. Now what that has actually been around. We've made that. I think Oinker was here yet. Oh, is that I right? I, I found that recipe someplace in Wisconsin was doing it. Wow. I was reading one of our magazines and and I came across it and I thought. That's kind of cool. So, yeah. So I, that's been being made here for yeah thirty thirty years. So let's now. get let's get to the meat and potatoes of it. The gas pizza. Oh, mm. yes. Because I love the gas. The pizza. biggest seller of all. Yeah. By far, or like how oh. are the numbers close? <clears throat> it's it's got a substantial lead. Does it really? I love the gas pizza. Could you make that into a sandwich somehow? Ooh. You'd have to have a fork. Well, honestly, yes. I've made what I call an open face French bread <laughs> <laughs> sandwich before and made a gas on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's oh yeah. I, I mean, the gas is like you hear people talk about Supreme pizzas, where it has maybe some olives and some of that other. But this thing, legitimately, the gas. If you, it's all that in the kitchen. Sink. Oh my oh, yeah. goodness! It, it. How did the gas come about? That, I found, actually, we were just looking at a menu that Brother Joe had, and I told him it's not the original, but I told I said, so I set him on a mission now. I said, keep looking. We might, you might have the original menu from 1972. The one that he brought over, I think, was 73. I think it was a second printing. The reason why I know this is because the brain sandwich isn't on it. Is that <laughs> there right? Was brain so sandwich. brain sandwich on the original menu. There was yeah. brain sandwich and turkey fries too. Turkey fries, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But but the gas was on the original menu. Wow. And so 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 you want a brief history of the pizza? Will you do that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So okay. So here's how this works. So uh, a guy by the name of Kozel McCushion had a food service operation in Mount Carmel, Illinois, and how he got in here. 
I don't have a clue. But Warren met him, whatever, and he came in. And so there was Warren and Wendy and Oinker talking with Kozel McHugh, who was originally from Chicago. Okay. And relocated down to... Probably because he was in the mob and he had to hide. <laughs> you may be. Witness protection. That only makes that story better if you throw no, that little well, detail. Yeah, yeah, you never know. I mean, uh, so anyway... name like Kozel McHugh. 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 There you go. Yes, yes. And so anyway, that, you know, so he came in and he showed us how, showed them, not me. I mean, I was here, but, you know, I wasn't. Because he washing dishes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Pearl, I wasn't Pearl died. Not, not at that point. At oh, that okay. point, I was just, they bring me in, set me on the counter seat, and just say, sit there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. You know. Anyway. <laughs> so he taught he taught them guys how to make a Chicago tavern-style pizza, is basically. Chicago tavern-style. Okay. What, what we make. Because here's the other thing. Everything's pie cut except for the small pizza. You're right. Or, excuse me, party, party cut. Party cut, except for the small pizza. Small right. pizza is still pie cut, but all the other two sizes, the bigger ones, are all party cut. And they they do that way in the taverns in Chicago way back in the day, so that you could just be doing what you're doing and just grab a small piece mm -hmm. and just keep going. Uh. And then we always put the cheese on top. You don't see that anymore anyway. Right. We slice cheese. We probably slice, oh, I don't know, several hundred pounds a week of cheese and that's uh, cool so you get it in a full block yeah we 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 used to get them in 20 pound blocks i used to throw them down the stairs to me in high school you know? yeah hey, hey here's another one coming down you know you oh, <laughs> oh god, god guys of course then they play pranks on you throw a screen in the oven put it up on the top hey grab us that screen would you yeah, yeah, nice imprint on your hand you know things like that fun yeah. stuff, fun right? stuff. <laughs> yeah and so he showed us how and that's where the gas came from he was like here do this and then you you do all this on there. Now, that from then till now is still the number one selling pizza. Mm -hmm. Above sausage, above pepperoni, above sausage and pepperoni. Because, believe it or not, people do like a loaded pizza. Oh, yeah. And they like olives. Yeah. Of all things. Now, of all things that they do say we don't want on the pizza is olives. Yeah. But aside from that. Because the gas, it, it has green and black, correct? Oh, and I love them both. Oh, yeah. Banana pepper. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You give me a gas with yeah. some peppersinis. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Squeeze it all over. <laughs> you yeah. know, now, now I will say this, too. Uh, that crust and everybody, you know, we, we've had people over the years kind of get a little burr under their saddle, saddle because we don't make our own dough. Right. That's a whole nother animal. Yeah. The, you know, people don't realize that. I mean, we're not built to do that no you don't have the area you're cranking out so much that you would never keep up well yeah. you don't have the space and to be space. tossing dough and 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 so that tavern style pizza they never made the dough no they made these par baked crust and that's how we started doing this yeah so for all these decades we use a par baked crust now prior to covid that crust that we had used for decades. Yeah, it went away. It went away. I remember that. Yeah, because you had to change sizes too, didn't you? Because yeah. you couldn't get the 14s or you couldn't get something, something there for a while. Yeah, the nines and this and that. And and so then for six years now, it's been round robin of trying to figure out, okay, what's mm -hmm. going on? Well, here recently, our supplier, the guy we were talking to earlier, mm -hmm. Onate, their company, they found a crust. Good. So and how recent was this change? Four months. No shit. Five wow. Months. So it's pretty recent. And I like it because it's not thick, but it's not like crack yeah. or thin. But the it's new like, the new one or the old one? No, the new one now. It's like the, the, the most the most it's the that bottom. crunch. And I enjoy that. And I, I mean I know it's with the the the, the heat on the bottom right, and everything right. the way and like you say with that that tavern style par crust or par boiled or whatever the hell you call it. Par cooked. Par baked. Par, par baked. baked. Par there it which is. we've been yeah. doing that. You know, that's Murphy's, you know, Murph uh, the Murphy's uh Oil, oil soap? No, <laughs> not oil. <laughs> the the uh, what, take and bake. Got it. Yeah, you know, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've yeah, been yeah, doing yeah. par baked pizzas for 40 years. No shit. <laughs> but I, I think it accents a lot of that. And it's it's got a nice undercarriage mm -hmm. to to take care of You're all. You're a big the, undercarriage guy. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I watch a lot of Dave Portnoy pizza reviews, you know, with the flop and all that shit, you know, which they're traditional pie slices. Oh, yeah. The undercarriage is key when you're looking at a heavy stacked pizza, right? Yeah. You know, when you got a lot you of sauce, you got a lot of shit. You, <laughs> you don't want that thing to be <laughs> you need so, a 
quality undercarriage. There, so uh, you don't want it I to be so power flop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so floppy ass in the middle that you can't. Now, here's one thing I will tell you, John Songer. Uh-oh. I, I, this comes from my core. Oh no! You would not believe how many times we have had the conversation about the party cut versus the pie cut, and I myself, I hate to say it, but I, I am probably more of a pie cut guy. Yeah, I think it would probably blow my mind if I ordered a uh, like a large gas or a large pizza from here and and requested it to be pie cut because I think it would probably be pretty tough. It, to it wouldn't work. Well, it'd be pretty tough to oh, eat. Oh yeah, it would work. Yeah, it would yeah, work. It would work. We, we've done that thing called the ultimate gas. Oh yeah, and that is pie cut. Yeah, that thing because gargantuan. Yeah, I mean it'll it'll hurt you. What? The ultimate gas. I don't know. I've- Does it still? Do you still have? Uh, now that crust is probably custom order type. Oh thing. no no no! No, so no, you it's, it's same one. Yeah, okay. like I said, because of the style of that crust being the not thick but not thin. It, right. Like I said, we've done we've had dough balls, we've had you know dough sheets. Right. And tried making a gas on those, and it just doesn't support it. That's what I'm saying. It, it doesn't, doesn't have a good it, undercarriage. It, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no <laughs> undercarriage, baby. I need that undercarriage, you know, because yeah. you got a lot of stuff on there yeah. and it just it's got to be supported. Yeah. That's right. I don't know. Like I don't know. We and we we've we've covered that early on. Yeah. You know, in one of our shows but it, that like was up one here, of our questions. Up here if you if you brought me out a pizza and it was um and it was pie cut and not the party cut, I wouldn't know what to do. Like, if you brought me out of gas and it was cut that way, I'd be like, mm-hmm. what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I, I don't know <laughs> if I can handle That's an EMF, they call that. An EMF. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That foo bar. Yeah. yeah like, I don't know what that would be. What the hell is this? Um, what is your favorite thing on the menu? Yeah, I was hoping you would get there. Yeah. And this has got to be tough because this being your it kind of like be like picking your favorite children. Oh man! Yeah. Oh, and I don't do that. That's well, you, that, <laughs> you guys have children now. That, you do not have a. Thing. You would no. say it's your daughter. Every, well, <laughs> easy, easy. That's, the brothers already have witnessed that. Uh, <laughs> sure. We never got to do any of that when we were. Well, maybe. I think it's just because that's a baby child thing. All like right. it's a youngest child thing. Because right. that we yeah you know all about that and so <laughs> we always give my brother shit too like you little yeah, yeah well they're born. wore out by the time they get to you yeah you know? I mean, for sure <laughs> yeah. like you guys have done oh you've been running through the ride you know? yeah <laughs> hell yeah but anyway go favorite ahead. favorite oh god boys i don't know yeah it's i tough. mean i really don't i mean on a, on a, on a, <clears throat> let's say you had one of them late nights and the next day and you're just kind of you know you gotta eat. You just gotta eat. Yep. So what's the best comfort food to just have something there through watching a ball game and you're just kind of lounging? And I guess nachos. Yeah, my wife loves my your spicy chicken nachos. Yeah, see, I, I but I like the, the nachos, supers, nachos. the super nachos. Oh, you're the talking chili, about I'm the chili, and chili cheese. baby. Yeah, when those my, are pretty good. When my mom, I think it was when my mom was pregnant with either me or my brother, one or the other. But that was one of the things on the list. That and a truck stop uh, <laughs> lemon meringue pie yes, yes. or whatever the oh, hell yeah. that shit was. My mom said, Dad, I was born in December, of course, and, mm-hmm. and they were, Mom said the one time, Dad, it was, you know, snowing to beat hell, and Mom sent Dad to the truck stop at like 3 o'clock in the morning <laughs> for a slice of pie, you know. But my mom, still to this day, when she comes up here or I find out that me or my brother are come, you know, whatever, and she's like, Bring me some nachos. Bring me some nachos. So that was always the super. I can I can remember as a kid when we'd come up here, uh, when we were fortunate to come out and be allowed to be brought in public. Um, You're unchained. From yeah, the face of the wall. <laughs> we would uh, we'd order pizzas, obviously, and then it'd be nachos and then breadsticks. Oh yeah, where it was kind of the big thing. It would be a meat lovers pizza. And then probably whatever the kids yeah, I w- that. would go, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <I> one of, <laughs> one of the that wild. That's one cool. of the biggest things. It, it was wild. Um, was mom always got the corners on the pizza? Oh yes. And when she passed away, you still you told us that, yeah. And when she passed away, it was Janelle grabbed a corner, and I was like, whoa, whoa, "What whoa, are whoa, you whoa, whoa, whoa. doing?" <laughs> and then I was like, "Well, you know." But it like you think about, it's kind of crazy because this place is an institution. 
and when you have institutions, you have memories here. Oh God! And I would say that that probably one of those big, you know, one of those memories is Gaslight Pizza. Those corner slices, you didn't touch them because they were mom's, right? Mm. And those nachos and everything else. But also, I've had some when Janelle and I first got married and together. When she moved down here, when we were building our house. We were here probably every Thursday for sure, <laughs> plus another time throughout the week. And we yeah. would just we we'd been working on the house. We'd be able to come in late. We'd catch the end of open mic, and we'd just eat and just have a few beers and relax. And it was great. But uh, this place holds a lot of fond memories for me here. Now, Dave, I know you're a little bit of a transplant, but uh, your fond memory might have been taking the stage to sing a little uh little yeah, tune. luckily it was on video yeah tell tell us now not to put the spotlight on you but here real quick as a transplant and you not being used to like growing up with this staple what's this like what is your favorite menu item obviously we probably know what it is already but what what's one thing that you enjoy about here yeah the favorite menu thing is the johnny dart that's but I haven't had everything on the menu. I True. don't know if I've ever had the gas before, and I love a loaded pizza. Oh, God. oh boy. So. Well, we may have to come back after a while. <laughs> yeah. so. I just stay for the buffet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I guess I'm not sure. I, I don't like. I don't have a favorite memory or anything. It's just, I've never been here and had a bad time, though. Exactly. Well, that's it's, a good it's thing. just a lot of the... <laughs> I don't know. Just it would have been a bad place. time and for you to say. I think he would say. probably would have said if he did, because Dave's a pretty straight shooter. Yeah. Know? Well, this, that guy one time and whatever. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm always telling Jen, like, we don't come out to eat very often, uh, but this is always where I want to go just because I... It's a comfortable place. Well, mm-hmm. it's a hell of a living room to hang out in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and that's the whole point. You want it to be comfortable. I think as a kid, for me, like, every time... That it, like the Italian sub, like for me, mm-hmm. when I was a kid, like every time I take half Italian chips and a pickle, okay, you know what I mean, and that was that was that was me, like forever when I was a kid, and then obviously, but I'm not a big Strom guy. See, now there's people that I know that would drive for miles and miles to get a Gaslight Strom. Mm-hmm. My mom, one of them. She's I'm a, not a Strom guy. I'm not either. a Strom. Yeah, I didn't know it started as a sandwich. The first time I ever had it was a pizza. Oh wow! And uh, well, a true Strom is a yeah, hoagie. It's a hoagie. Yeah, 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 yeah. grinder hoagie. Grinder. You know, see, that's there's uh, a local place down in uh, Fort Branch that they they market theirs as a grinder. Grinder. Yeah. Yeah. You know, same so. same difference. And and that's just the back kitchen stuff we're talking about. You know, and the pizzas. Let's face it, you can get any kind of combination. Exactly. You know. Right. But you up, don't you up, don't have a veggie pizza on the menu though, yeah, do you? Do. Oh, yeah. do you? I never look at it. Yeah, guess. really. Yeah, and then up front wise, what I mean, what what's that other? I mean, you still got well, you do pork chops, burgers, stuff like that. Too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, cheese uh, tortellini. Cheese, well, cheese tortellini. Yeah. Uh, very, very, very broad menu. Very broad. Uh, I guess up front because that's on there too. The burger has changed over the years. BJB. But, but the one that the one thing that's been on there since day one is the tenderloins. Oh yeah, the breaded or grilled mm. tenderloins, and yeah, and you know for years and years, your old buddies the Merkleys, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we were using their tenderloins here for years. You know, the pre-cut, yeah, you know, all that. Mm-hmm. And then once I got here, uh, we everything we do on that is we get we get the whole pork loins in, yeah, and we cut them, yeah. Mm. So we go through. You know, a couple pork loins a week. Right. They're, they're all hand cut, and we cut them for the pork chops, eight ounce chop. And guess what? We do a four or four to five, four to five ounce tenderloin. So it all you, you cut pounded out. You know. Yeah. You hear something in here going bang, bang, bang. You know somebody's beating a tenderloin out. Yeah. yeah. Right, you know. That's something that I feel like is a uh, is pretty much like a Dubois County staple. I feel like everybody's got to have a pork tenderloin on their menu. Right mm-hmm. here I think be. it's an Indiana thing. Is it mm-hmm. up yeah. north too? Mm-hmm. That's I'm cool. actually in a Facebook group about just the uh, Hoosier breaded tenderloin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is so the gas leads on the pizza side, but what's the top menu item? Is it the gas or is it what? Uh, what do you seem to? What do your numbers say sells yeah. the most? Uh, you know, pizza in general, obviously, is our number one claim to fame, and after that's the hoagies. 
And so then, yeah, so then you just break it down from the pizza side, and it, it probably is the gas. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. Could, I could go up right now and get those numbers <laughs> and tell you. Yeah, we uh, don't have to be. But, we're not that yeah, particular yeah, on know, this show. But, the effects are just kind of yeah, yeah, with yeah, us. Yeah, you know, but uh, but here again, then then the meat lover probably. Oh, yeah. You know, and then after that, I'll tell you what, the Johnny has kind of worked its way into mm-hmm. being a. Uh, now, did you know, putting the Johnny Dart on pizza, did that help lead to a, a kind of a resurgence in the uh, selling of the hoagie johnny dart actually i think might have detracted a little bit wow really? yeah. yeah yeah i've seen some different variations of the johnny dart pizza too that i'm not really keen on or haven't really tried myself you don't like the pickles the pickles oh man. yeah the pickles are great Did I, somebody said that and i i I've, i may have had a slice but i don't really remember having yeah. it but uh do it on a reuben too is that right oh yeah Pickles yeah. on a Reuben? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, so the, there was a table down here one night, and they were like, they had a big, it was a giant dart pizza, but it had dill pickle slices on it. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Like, how could you <laughs> deface oh, yeah. such a beautiful masterpiece? And they're like, no, dude, game changer. Well, Try B- it. BHP down the street here, my yeah. accountants, I mean, hey, they get a Reuben pizza there. <laughs> or a giant dart. They've got pickles on the, it. And that's not just your regular run of the mill pickle chip either. Oh, is Ooh, that not right? That is a spicy. Oh, pickle. oh, sure. Pickle slice. Pickle slice. Oh, crinkle my. cut. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. crinkle you know, cut. I mean, Dave you know, over here I'm is like, in. Dave's like a little kid at Christmas. Like, he wait, he's, <laughs> he's salivating. <laughs> he sees the kitchen getting fired up well, and getting yeah. ready, and he's yeah. like, shit. A lot of, the mean, wheels are starting to turn. You know, here, my boys. job is to make you hungry. Yeah, well, you know, you, uh, you're good. winning. You know, yeah. if you take that, like you, Mace, you love that Italian, so you start off with a little that mayo that's, Similar to Miracle Whip, you put right. that on there, and then of course you go with a little Swiss, a little American, mm-hmm. a little Mott's, mm-hmm. sandwich some ham in there, throw that on the screen, put her in the oven, bring it out. Now it's not it's done yet. Lightly toasted. It's see that's the other thing. People think the Italian should just be harder, hard, hard as a brick you know, bat. No, it's it's a it's a lightly toasted sandwich. If you're going to eat it the right way, that's the way you eat it. So then you finish it off with a little lettuce, a little tomato, a little golden Italian dressing, drizzle oh, all on yeah. both sides. That's it. That's the key. Yeah. And Dave, then, Dave's over here about to have a stroke. <laughs> then pepper. Oh, yeah. And garlic salt. Oh, boom, boom. God. Put her together, slice, boom, boom, boom. Out the door. Butter it up. You're yeah. good to go. So why? So that you bring up a, a, a point there. The sliced in four pieces, has it always been that way? Always. Mm-hmm. always. And I like that. Is there a reason behind it? So sometimes you you know I th- my personal opinion would be if you you, you got a half you right. know what I mean sometimes you don't I mean the, the way the I don't know it just works it does <laughs> and, and well here's the thing now think about it this is I, I get that it works because that's why they do it there big fella but I'm looking for a little bit of that origin story of well one night we were drunk and we were eating a uh, half and no. it all fell out of the bottom and we figured going into cutting that half into half to make quarters. Was well, a little that, bit better. Eh, maybe I don't know. You'd have to talk to Anchor about that. Uh, that. That was when they they created that four slice deal. But but part of that was because we did make half sandwiches. Out right, of it, right. You know? Yeah. Anchor always did. You know, we had a full nacho, a half nacho, and a quarter nacho. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> a quarter, quarter nacho. nacho. That'd, That'd probably be guys. tough. I have people still to this day that walk in. Can I get a quarter order of nachos? I'm like, no, we don't do that no more. <laughs> <laughs> quarter order of nachos. But anyway, uh, 1985 you. called. They want their menu back. Hey, Pat Paul, no more. But the thing about that sandwich is now here. Here I got a conundrum for you to think about. Here we go. Uh-oh. Okay, now this is something for you guys to investigate and come back with an answer for me down the road. Got okay. It. Where do you go across this country? You get a foot-long sandwich, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you know how hard it is to find a 12-inch hoagie bun? No clue. Probably pretty difficult. That's pretty difficult. Because it probably comes in 14, 16, and... No, eights. Eights. Eights, tens. Twelves are like, oh, we we use one, but I've not always been happy with it. That company changed hands, too, and... You know, it's kind of, you know, it it comes in not a hundred percent consistent the way you would like it to as ah, a owner. Really? Yeah. You're looking at it going, yeah. and then some people get a little burr because it doesn't taste quite the same every time. Well, that's unfortunately nothing I can do. 
Unless you were going to open up a bakery and start making your <laughs> right. own junk. Right. And yeah. we did buy them from a bakery, the Jasper Bakery, years ago. And yeah. We bought them from there years right. ago. That's cool. But as far as I've gone to food shows, and of course I deal online a lot like everybody, and I'm looking and I'm looking, and it's like the only ones you find are like double the price of the one I'm paying for. It. Wow. Like, but we sell, mindset, a foot-long sandwich. Exactly. I can't figure this one out. That's wild. <laughs> we'll have to call our friends at uh, Subway, see what they got going on over there. Yeah, I think they, well, they get them all in in Demi Lowe's. That's I right, they and then bake. they bake them themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that's yeah. probably the thing. Huh. Yeah, you would think that'd be pretty commonplace for a foot-long sandwich. You Because that is pretty much everywhere. Industry standard, yeah. you would yeah. think, yeah. Huh. What, what if like it's a- actually a foot-long or if it's just a 10-inch and they just sell it as a foot-long? Bingo. Bingo. That's that. Is. That's another thing because I'm telling you right now, you know, uh, the big three, they sell a 14-inch pizza, right? Mm-hmm. How much of a circle is that on the outside edge? Usually about an inch. Mm-hmm. So you're getting a 12-inch pizza pizza with product with an inch of crust True. all the way around it. yeah and unless you, you want to pay that up charge for the stuff crust you know it's really yeah not, yeah not worth it's it. not worth it you know and and so so we make again that chicago's tavern style but then they brought out the big new yorker years ago oh you yeah know, and, and that's everything out to the edge which obviously we've been doing it for way. years for years year. yeah you know everything's always out to the edge so Everything that's a that's a huge thing too because I know a lot of people that will literally leave their crust lay, like they just won't eat. That's waste. You know what I mean? There's yeah. just there's nothing there. It's just bread. You're just taking away spots that you could potentially eat more product. Right. So there again, that's a that's another huge advantage of the the, the tavern styles. So. Mm-hmm. The uh, changing gears. Let's talk about some other things. You can host private events back here, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you guys do a bar catering service as well. We do. And then you've talked about Raider Wednesday, uh, which is a big thing. But you also do a fundraising arm, too. Yes. So, you, I mean, you said you're in the food and entertainment business. You're actually, yeah. you've got some other irons in the fire that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, just, I guess, a little bit about that. How did, you know, the Take and Bake fundraiser come to be? Raider Wednesday, which is very popular, kind of come to be, um, you know, and then if anybody wants to, you know, have their events here at this backspace, like just a little bit about those other avenues you got. Well, I, I guess I guess the simplest thing to, to to get started on here is that it's like any business. You're always you're you're you've got to find another way to bring revenue. in. Right. I mean, that's just the nature of being in business. So you don't go to the clothing store and find one style of jean, you know, exactly. they've got 10 or 12. Yes. Well, and if and you go to these big and tall stores, John, with slim your, pickings. Yeah. It's slim yeah, pickings. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. you're not a portly fellow. Yeah. So you, don't, <laughs> you don't know what that's like, <laughs> but, but you know, but that's the thing over the years. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a marketing guy, you know, I mean, uh, and I'm a numbers guy. So, you know, really I, I know how to cook. Uh, but really, I guess my job descriptions that I am a finance and marketing guy, you exactly. know, that's, that's what I do. And so you are always squeezing pennies because that's another misconception, by the way, about the food and beverage industry, unless you're lucky that, that bottom line, it isn't real thick. I wouldn't imagine. I could no. not. <laughs> you know, why would anybody would put themselves through all this fun <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah. to work seven days a week, usually 364 days a year? I don't have a clue. Right. <laughs> but uh, but you're always looking at other things. So so the I guess let's start with Raider Wednesday real quick. Okay. Because that's the longest thing that we added in. And, and that came about, I was a member of a marketing group uh, many years ago, 15 or 16 years ago. And so I, this guy presented this marketing idea and I thought, you know, that's kind of cool. And, and I know that our neighbors to the South, I think heritage Hills, they had the, the, the quarterback, club, quarterback club. Yeah. Okay. And that was going on about that same time too. But, uh, uh, this guy was talking about his place and it was in Oregon somewhere. And so I, I, I rolled that around in my head and I talked to my buddy, Walt Ferber and me and Walt, you know, like I said, 07, 08, we were just getting ready to hit that other big dip they called the uh, 
Great Recession. Uh -huh. but, you yeah. know, people forget about that too. That's not been that long no, ago. That was so, a bag beater, man. So so we're sitting here going, how do we bring more people in? You know? Yeah. So so we're sitting here going, okay. So we, we hashed over and said, how about if we bring in the athletic teams from the school? And you interview them and we, you know, take care of the coach's meal and and uh, it got to the point now to where I kicked money back to the booster clubs. Right. You know, because, hey, I, yes, you, I, I'm bringing you in, so we're generating revenue. Revenue. That's what we do, but we're also wanting to give back also. Exactly. And so Walt and I discussed that, and I said, we don't want to just do football because football is the, the, big, the biggest one. Yeah, that's what we talked about that earlier. But there are so many kids that – are out there busting their tails, whether it be with football or cross country, basketball, ball, baseball, all of them. You, know, you even include band in these. Yeah, later yeah, ones. and yeah. we we now we that happened a few years back, about six or eight years ago. We started including band because, man, I will tell you what, those kids. Yeah, that's crazy. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, a lot of people don't understand that workload, yeah. but it, it's a and, bunch. And then, uh, and then I, uh, we started including the cheerleaders mm -hmm. because, again, that's there's competitive cheerleading I mean, competitions and everything else. Just, just under like the table, I, I was a cheerleader. Is that right? <laughs> I, I, I was the one of the original Southridge male cheerleaders. Yay, Rob! Yeah, we Yay, did Rob. basketball season. There was me and about four other football players. Is that right? <laughs> we had fun. That's right. But, Getting up at five o'clock in the morning, and going out to the gym, yeah, and working on stunts and this and that. I mean, that's <laughs> not easy work. Oh no, you yeah, know for sure. So, so we thought, yeah. So we brought all these kids in, and uh, that's we're sixteen years in. That's cool. That's wild. Real cool. And then you go back to your 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 fundraiser stuff. The fundraiser, and then stuff, yeah. I think like the the hosting of the like the the. Uh, no fee party room or whatever you call right, it. Yeah. Right, yeah. You don't charge to rent, right? You we, just you just reserve or how's that work? Well, it depending on the size of the group. You yeah. know, there's always a rub, you know. Yeah. You get some people that they do indeed want the entire back room, but they've only got thirty or forty people. Yeah. And then you gotta charge. Then we've yeah. gotta we've gotta upcharge you a certain amount just because. Yeah, we got mouths to feed around But here. we get a lot of, uh, you know, I'm sure, I think you guys have been in here for oh, yeah. class reunions. Yeah, hell yeah. And we do a lot of class reunions, and, and it's like, you know, if, if you get me 75 people, I'm, you don't have to worry about anything. Exactly. You know, yeah. you, you, got, you want the whole building, now that's a whole nother. Yeah, whole ball of uh, wax there. Uh, then we have to talk because, see, that's the other beauty of the versatility of the building. We can always just have you down here and still have that front room yep. open and yeah. still be doing our for, care for public dining and care things out. like yeah. that and and so that that's been a staple you know and here again that was something i thought of many years ago after the crackdown of 03 on the driving while under the influence and you know again these are things that came about just because you had to start making modifications for sure for that lost revenue yeah for sure yeah and uh, and the fundraising we're we're just getting rolling too with the uh, with the uh, uh, pizza fundraising. My sister actually got me started on. Is that right? Uh, Ten years ago, she's down at the uh, what is that Southern Indiana Career and Tech School there off Lynch Road. Okay. And so you know that she said, "Hey, could you guys do pizzas?" And I said, "Yeah, I guess." <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? And so we were, we actually went down there and used their kitchen facility oh, because cool. they have a hospitality side of the equation. Oh, okay. There. Yeah. And beautiful kitchen. Love to have a kitchen like that. Yeah. But, uh, but we would go down there and now we make them here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I actually just finished taking my work home with me a couple of weeks back. Yeah. Uh, built a garage, took a little longer than what I expected, but it's, it's finished. Pretty and healthy so, size garage though. Yeah. We're going to, That's on the one, one side of it's about the same size as our back kitchen here. Here, and uh, That's we'll be making be... our fundraising pizzas there. Nice. So the um, the fundraising pizza, it's kind of a double, it's kind of a win-win for you. One part of it is you're getting the name out there. The second part of it is you're obviously benefiting the community, which you have a, seem to have a strong for, you know, you do a lot of things, you donate a lot. Um, but the third thing of it is 
you keep your people busy selling pies right. and you make a little bit of money off of yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that's I guess a great deal, man. Triple win. Yeah. Great. So, deal. you know, and, and that's still the thing. Like I said, we've been here for so many years and, uh, you know, the people, you know, when, when you talk, think about it, you, I see great, great grandkids. Yeah. Now when yeah. I was that small. Yeah. And, and that's wild. Just, isn't it? you're just looking at these groups come in. Like yesterday we had a group call and, and you know, there was 20 or 30 of them. And, and the eldest one, I, I remember seeing he, he was probably about 75. Yeah. And then you had all these miniatures running around. Too, you know? <laughs> it's like, and, and where do you go? That's cool. Yeah. You that's know? cool. So yeah. we do these interviews and we have a couple times, and at the end, we always give the interviewee an opportunity to ask us some questions. So let's take a couple seconds. If you got anything off the cuff that you would like to ask us, and then before we close out, and yeah, so let her rip. You got any questions for us? Anything you've been wondering about other than the 12-inch sub <laughs> debacle? <laughs> what do I wonder about you? I do wonder about you guys because I'm wondering – what in the hell are these guys doing? Oh, yeah. yeah. When we figure it out, we'll let you yeah. know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. so I guess I, it's probably been asked. So, yeah, why Why are you doing this? Uh, I think gluttons for punishment. Well, <laughs> I think the why, it, uh, the why may be different for everybody, but I think one common thread of it is, is we've become good friends, mm. and we were sitting around drinking, and... It just was like, you know, maybe we ought to record this because mm-hmm. there's other people having these conversations. Yeah, mm-hmm. There's other people that have these thoughts. And uh, I think the why for me that's carried through so far is, <clears throat> one, it's a lot of fun. I don't do this in my daily life. Mm-hmm. like, And I've always thought about a podcast mm-hmm. uh, doing one. Not that I have the world's best ideas, but I, I'm a conversationist. I love having conversations with people. I love having conversations with random people, never met a stranger kind of approach. And I think this is one way to do it for that outlet. But, you know, I think we're just having fun with it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it doesn't feel like work. There's days where it's stressful and frustrating. Right. Kind of probably like this place. But, you know, the why for it is some of it is there's, it's an untapped industry in this area that you don't see a lot of people. Now there's been a few other podcasts come up and we're not new to the game. I mean, right. We, you know, you mentioned Curtis earlier, like he's obviously, he's been doing it for, been a long for time. doing it a long time, but with this format here, we love Southern Indiana and we love our home. And I think that's another big thing of it too, is yeah, we'll always talk about where we're from for and, sure. and, and how it is. And yeah, so it's kind of that outlet. And I think we've even had that conversation of, Wow, if we would ever make it to a national stage, we're not looking to change anything. No. I guess who we are, where we're from. So, what about you, Smoke? Uh, I think most of the why is probably better asked. Why not? I mean, same thing. Enjoy it, have fun doing it. I think what made me want to dive into it with these two guys <clears throat> is the difference in our backgrounds. Um, if there was ever like a Odd couple. Well, uh, like Thruple. some golden reason, you know. There's so many people anymore that are so afraid to talk and 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 create a relationship with someone if they're if they have any different outlooks. The first time I met Casey, I was mfing him to Mace about his daggone concession stand horse shit with <laughs> middle school baseball, and like I met him like that. He was like, "Hey, this guy thinks you're a shit coach," and I'm like, "Yeah." And then we end up bullshitting, and we get into how you're supposed to wear your hats backwards or not. And we didn't agree on much. We were all able to talk about it. Nobody got butt hurt, but hurt. And well, I'm never talking to this guy again. I'm like, man, so that's what the world needs more of is everybody's got an opinion. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, but it's cool to sit down and talk about it. Yeah. Maybe learn yourself something, somebody just out in the garage one time, Casey come down the lane or Dave just randomly shows up. We're drinking beer, hanging out. I think out at my house or somewhere. And we was like, I went out to piss and they come back in and they're talking about a podcast. And I was at the mine at the time. I was, 
I mean, that's all I did was was consume podcasts. Like mm-hmm. I that you know, ten, twelve hours a day just listening because you, you know you listen to the radio and it's the same shit over yeah. and over and over, yeah. and it's tough because that's what the people want to listen to. And then I'm like, you know what? Dave's got all this recording equipment. I mean, a lot of you know older stuff. We've definitely upgraded tremendously oh, sure. <laughs> since, you know you know in the you know since then but yeah, watch episode one. Oh god but then, you know and it's like we were we were talking about all these random things and he's like man we should we should uh we should start recording this shit you know and we did and and it's just you know here we are you know a year and some change later and you know the smiles and the gratification and the you know, like the, the being able to help out with things around here and there and shit like that. That's what I really enjoy. And I think that's one thing. And another thing my wife always says, it's the cheapest hobby I've ever had. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so that, uh, that's a huge deal for me, too. So, Well, I uh, guess welcome to the entertainment business. Right. I mean, yeah, you know, we, like I said, we are in it. It's, it's uh, yeah. uh, you know, kind of what you are. You are now official entertainers. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Like me on a small scale. Yeah. You know, we're trying, we're trying to push out. Yeah. yeah. We're trying and, to get and out it, there. It'll get there. I think I got a radius of about 30 miles, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Well, at least local diners. We do sell stuff all over the country. On That's cable, cool. So That's real cool. Well, you're a commercial John from the gaslight. Yeah. Hey, it's hey, John from the gaslight. It's John from the gaslight. Yeah. You know, that, that right there is a coin <laughs> phrase <laughs> that'll live forever. Uh, any more questions for us? I don't know. Well, we don't have to. We don't have don't, to spill them all out. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, there's be there'll be many times. I, I'm sure that I will revisit your stage, and I will. Good deal. I, That's like perfect. Today that was kind of freewheeling. I will put together a list of. I know. Of, there we go. There's <laughs> that. There's that, John. There's yes. that, John brain going. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll get this all put together. So tell us, tell us, or the listeners, tell the wanderers anything that you want them to know. This is your chance. This is your really. Stage. This is my chance. Here oh go. My God, kind of a final thought. Yeah, this final, fi- we'll all that. go around. It's yeah. a final thought. Okay, yeah. final thoughts. Okay, final thought. Honestly, this has been the most perplexing idea that I've ever tried to figure out why I'm always viewed this way. But we're not a bar, exactly. We are a restaurant that has a lounge. There you go. But people talk to me and, oh, your bar, your bar. How's, how's your bar doing? And I'm like, dude, okay, I'll, I'll just field that question. Yeah. Lay it out, you know, sweep it under the rug there. But when 80% of what you do has nothing to do with alcohol. Yes. You're not a bar. You're not a bar. But. I think because of the entertainment and all the years of it, people just randomly assume that you are a bar. Makes right. sense. And I mean, yeah, it's it's probably tough to break the mold. But I like mean, you said that eighty yeah. percent is is a big thing there. I mean, that's why the name that I changed it to all the years gone by now is the Gaslight Pizza yeah, and, and Grill. Grill. That's right. Hmm. Yeah, makes total sense. That's a good one there. That's a good one. So real quick, hours of operation. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, 4 to 9. Wednesday through Saturday, 11 till 10. And Sunday is 11 till 8. Those are all newly freshened up because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. Uh, We do have a lounge. Yeah. And so if there are some characters wanting to watch ball games and they go past 10 Mm o'clock, we're here. Yep. Full menu, full carryout. Uh, Obviously, copious amounts of family seating for dining and everything like that. Uh, Party room available. Entertainment booking wise, you, if you got a band and you're looking for someone to play, hit up the Gaslight because they got an awesome. The acoustics in this building are phenomenal. Yep. Uh, and other than that, I, I'll just piggyback off that. And my final thought: I have so many memories here as a child. You know, you growing up around my old man. <laughs> you know, growing up in the in in the in this you know Holland Huntingburg area, my grandparents knowing your mom and dad. Oh yeah. You know, from the furniture refinishing finishing business, and you know, with Grandpa being on the fire department, and just a community staple that obviously 
holds a very, very close part of my heart, you know, and then obviously we know the other one down the street down there, the overtime, right. you know, that's when we were younger. I mean, it was, it was literally, the, there, I'm surprised there's not like a permanent footpath for me from back door to back door there <laughs> well, for a long time. they have redone the sidewalk. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. For, for a long time. But I just want people to know, like John said, there is obviously a lot more to the gaslight than than just the bar back here but the pizza the hoagies i mean everybody has their favorite everybody has their um you know their their staple when they come in but i think the thing that i take away the most when i come in here is that you know everybody's always just like mace you know what's going on you know and it's like i can poke my head back in the kitchen and see who's cooking you know hey how's it going man you know and i think it's that that small town restaurant that literally has been here forever my entire life you know that, and I and I think that it's it just shows that hard work and and um, you know persistence and everything like that really pays off in the long run. And uh, I'm glad to have you in our corner, man. Thank you, man. Well, John, thanks for having us out. Uh, you've been real good to us. You know, we got to have our big bash here. I'm sure that was a gamble on your side too. Like, uh, <laughs> even though the banner was wrong, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. and then they, they they kept it. They were you for sure you went with it? Yeah, it's going to be a great piece to laugh about. <laughs> but yeah, no, I appreciate everything you've done for us, letting us come in, taking the time to talk with us this morning. Um, like I said, this is my go-to here in town. We don't make it out too often, but this is where I always want to come to when we do. So. Looking forward to whatever else we can make happen here. So right on, Dave. Uh, I tell you what, it is um, kind of in the same sentiment as Big Mace. Obviously, I talked about you know memories with mom and and all that stuff. And these we talk about institutions that are dying off in this country. Bingo night. Uh, Which we, yeah. we got to get that plan That's for sure. Uh, Joel yeah. was like, "Hey, you guys," and I was like, "Yeah, we're, we, <laughs> just chill, bro. We just don't chill. understand how calendars work very well, and how busy we get, but we're gonna get it figured out." But this is an institution, mm -hmm. and uh, you got to be either a little bit lucky, a little bit crazy, a little bit dumb, or all three to stay in the business that you've stayed in throughout the years. You know, especially being at the you know, the one kind of driving the bus since 96, but the family and the story behind it. Um, but I couldn't imagine, you know, when the overtime uh, closed up, that in my mind was also an institution on 4th Street. Oh, yeah. And you get that little tinge of worry about, like, how things are going to be. And, and I know when my office was on 4th Street, like, I, I enjoyed knowing, you know, being part of, up here more i'm not obviously now but in french lick but i love that this place is held strong and has been an anchor for this side of four street mm -hmm. you know the other side of four streets had some development going on mm -hmm. but the anchor to this west side of four street mm -hmm. in my eyes has been the gaslight um and i think that that's awesome and and i'm glad that it's there and you know, for you to be crazy enough to let us say, "Hey, we're gonna throw a party. <laughs> we're gonna throw a party here. We hope it's gonna be packed with people." Hey, let me uh, let me borrow your it, car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically how that worked. <laughs> uh, and it worked out. But I, I love everything about this place. My wife and our early infancies of marriage, being up here and eating all the time. Obviously, it's been a little bit tougher with the kids because they don't. Well, they're just—they don't travel well. They're five, three, yeah. and soon to be one. But <laughs> yeah. uh, love everything about it. Appreciate the hell out of it, and uh, just glad that you guys keep doing it. And you know, the boys—I'm sure there's a succession plan because you don't want to do this forever. But uh, maybe you do. And someday, when we have your coffin up there on the stage and we do a <laughs> wake, that would be another piece of history hell in the yeah, gaslight. Bro. Yeah, yeah, I'll be good with that. There Maybe you bury you out back. Perfect, right? perfect. <laughs> hey, and this is that time where we look at the cameras and we will say, Dutchman out. See ya. <laughs>